Stuart Allen is an ex-presenter, an artist whose work is shown and collected internationally. He studied architecture before studio art because a high school guidance counselor convinced him that art school would squander his talents. A father of two, a runner, a sailor, a collector of unusual watches, he once rode his bicycle across the country and is married to a scientist which he says suits his analytical nature. But he builds kites and furniture and once, and this is the most important thing, with his father and brother, they built a medieval catapult that launched pumpkins. Please welcome Stuart Allen. So I get to decide when to push the space bar? Okay, I have 400 seconds to talk to you about time, but I've prepared a 45-minute introduction. <laughs> so bear with me. Now, I'm going to talk about time in art and life. And here goes. Okay, I have been alive for 1,293,280,679 seconds. If we express that in units of the Pecha Kucha, I have been, which is 400 seconds, I've been alive for 3,233,201 3, Pecha Kuchas, or the Pecha Kucha slide, 64,664,000, etc. I am really interested in photography and the way photography manipulates time. We think of photography as a way of fast seeing, has been called a way of fast seeing, but I'm, in, I'm more interested in, in, in its ability to see slowly. What happens with long exposures, photography interprets motion and distance in a weird way. In the late 90s, I made a series of photographs called Night Lines. On the one on the left, I took a light and I floated it down a creek, letting the creek draw a line through the photographic frame. The line, of course, didn't exist in real time, but exists in the photographic frame because of the way time and photography interact. On the right, it's the same light attached to a kite flying at nighttime. So that's the path of the kite as it, as it moves around in the sky. In this one, I was carrying the light as I walked through the landscape. It was about a 20 minute walk, and I'm moving through the landscape holding this flashlight. Again, the line doesn't exist in real time, but, but through the medium of photography, this sort of sculptural presence appears in the photographic frame. I also attached lights to dancers. This one is called Modern Number no. One. I enlisted professional dancers to dance in the ballroom of the Crocker Art Museum out in California. Uh, this, in this case, the light was attached to the dancer's wrist, and they performed this series of arm movements through the space. The photographs were later exhibited in that same gallery in the museum. The one on the top is the waltz. The light's attached to the dancer's shoulder in this case, and they waltz through the space. By the way, that photograph took 20 seconds to make, so it's one PKS in length. <laughs> the bottom photograph is belly dance. The light in that case was attached to the dancer's hip. So that's them belly dancing through the space. That one's 35 seconds, so it's 1.75 Pecha Kucha slides. <laughs> this is a piece by another artist named Martin Wattenberg. He figured out a way to map another time-based art form, which is song. And he, he created a computer algorithm that, that loops like moments in a song together. So each arc connects repeating patterns in the song. And he created these visual forms that are, again, static representations of time. In a lot of my sculptural work, I use repetition of form in order to establish that rhythm. And through that rhythm, you get this expanse of white cloth or, or this pattern that then variation shows up upon. So you may be variation in color, it may be variation in intensity of light, variation in shadow. But through that repetition, you see the variation. In this case, I was interested in compressing time and space. This is a 60 mile, 60 minute photograph. I set a camera up between the front seats of my car, opened up the shutter and drove for 60 miles. And I'm very interested in the idea that that whole space of 60 miles and 60 minutes is compressed into one two-dimensional photographic frame. This is the 10,000-year clock. It's a project by Stuart Brand that's funded by Jeff Bezos. And these guys are actually building a clock that will keep time for 10,000 years. Every day, it's going to create a unique chime. And the idea is that the, through the building of this clock, it's a way of thinking about sustainability. Thinking about sustainability through creating this object that has to last for 10,000 years. These are gifts to my children. They're maps of the night sky on the nights that they were born. The one on the top is my daughter. She was born on March 31st, 2004. That makes her 601,837 Pecha Kuchas old. My son was born on February 23rd. He's 373,125 Pecha Kuchas old. In order to know your position at sea, you need to know what time it is where you are and what time it is somewhere else. John Harrison was the first one that came up with a timepiece that could keep time on the rolling ocean. He used springs instead of pendulums. 
This, was, this is a diagram of his watch. It's important to know time so that you know your location when you're at sea. This is the average color of all the light in the universe. Research at Johns Hopkins University sampled 200,000 galaxies. They took all the color from all the light emitted from those galaxies, averaged it, and came up with one color that they called cosmic latte. You can see that over time, the color is getting warmer. This is a piece that I made a couple years ago that is a map of the color of the light as a sunset occurs. In this case, a sunset on April 11, 2007. Each of the vertical columns is separated by one minute in time. So it's a map of the color by minute as you approach the sunset and as the sun goes down below the horizon. This is a piece that I did at SAMA about the same time, and it was also a way of charting the color of the daylight. There's skylights above the Great Hall at SAMA, and there's light that comes in from the front and the rear facades. The large expanses of fabric were designed to show the variation in the color of light coming from above and coming from the front and the back. Whew. This is, this is a piece that I've got down on the Riverwalk of the, uh, 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 the museum reach of the Riverwalk, and it engages motion and time. These are stainless steel panels that have color embedded inside the panel. As you walk by the panels, the changing perspective makes the panels appear to change color. So it's movement through space. This is a similar idea. It was a temporary piece at Art Pace, half-inch acrylic panels that have an animated sequence on the back and a barrier layer on the front. When you walk by them, the dancers appear to move. So it's engaging movement through space in time to create a dynamic object out of a static, a dynamic experience out of a static object. This is a piece that's about breathing and time. It's a kite, a box kite, that encloses 23,891 cubic inches of air, which is the amount of air that I breathe at rest in one hour. It's also a functional kite. It's made out of sailcloth and lightweight wood. <laughs> These are 35 box kites. Each one encloses 398 cubic inches of air, which is the volume of air that I breathe in one minute. As it turns out, I've been alive for about 41 years, and I have breathed 8,582,435,782 cubic inches of air, which, as it happens, is about the equivalent of a seven-story building with an 80-foot by 80-foot imprint. Heartbeat time. The American Heart Association says that most humans have about 2.8 billion heartbeats in a lifetime. I've used up about one billion of those. That means I've got about 1.7 billion left, which means that I should live for about 65 more years, which is awesome, because that means that I'll live to be like 106. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Great. Congratulations.